Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit Sprint Demo Meeting for January 9th, 2018. It's a new year, and it's been almost a month since we've had one of these meetings. So we've got kind of a lot of stuff has happened in the, in the interim. Um, some cool things to talk about today. Uh, and without further ado, let's hop in. So looking back on uh, 2017, uh, this is the Metasploit.com site, which you should totally visit. Um, and these were really happen to be the top contributors according to GitHub for the past 12 months. So, you know, big shout out to, uh, to everybody that contributes to the, the Metasploit project. We really appreciate it. Um, along those lines, uh, we are excited to announce we've got a new team member. Uh, Aaron Soto joined us uh, recently as a uh, senior security researcher. Um, he totally looks like this guy. So <laughs> if you if you see his profile picture on GitHub, it may be a little different than that, but yeah. So you might Where did you get that picture? Oh my God. I just said a day while you weren't looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so that's that's totally Aaron. So yeah, so keep an eye out for him. Um, welcome aboard, Aaron. Uh, good times. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also it's had. Um, it is winter. You want to stay warm in this cold office. That's right. Um, over the the winter break, uh, we published uh, the Rapid Seven tradition of Haxmas, uh, which I think ended up being maybe thirteen posts this time around. We've got a baker's dozen or so, but. A lot of good stuff, some of which was from the Metasploit team, um, uh, much much of which wasn't, uh, but they're all fun reads. Uh, definitely go check out the the, the, the posts at our, at our blog.rapid7.com site. Um, good stuff. All right, so a whole lot of stuff landed, so much so that I think I'm gonna have to cover a few of the things next time. Um, but here is a, a bunch of stuff uh, up, up here uh, for your consideration. Um, is Brent, are you on the call? Did you happen to make it today? He, he, he joined about 20 minutes ago. Oh, I don't you. see him. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, got, I got another note here. So, in any case, um, you know, we've got some, you know, some new scanner modules. Uh, you can see right there um, some exploit modules that get your remote uh, code execution. Uh, some of which had been in, in the PRQ for a little while, but some of which were were, were new since the, the last time we met. Um, and the RC. Your know, remote code execution modules continue. There is a bunch more there. And a few of them were updates to uh, existing modules. Some like the MySQL payload added Linux support. The Drupageddon was actually uh, a, a version of the original Drupageddon module we had, but of the different approach. And then we added a new version of DOS uh, for the DiskBoss Enterprise exploit module uh, support. Test, uh, new DOS modules, if you like to denial of service, that's your thing. Um, some gathering modules. Uh, we got a new hardware bridge module that allows you to authorize. It does not deploy pyrotechnic devices in a vehicle, but allows you to check that you can authorize for their deployment. Uh, it's basically a security check because a lot of manufacturers implemented the same like algorithm for their key and it wasn't very secure. Um, we had a slew of Cambium Networks um, modules. I mean, you know, everything from scanner, uh, exploit gatherer. Um, so I just called it out as one one thing here, and apparently included a right bracket for some reason. Not sure why that's there, um, but that all kind of landed all at once. Uh, good stuff uh, for metal. Um, something that some folks have been interested in. There's a stageless stageless iOS payload support for jailbroken devices. Uh, works really well, and the extension loader landed. Um, and more things that landed. Uh, we made some enhancements, you know, as we, as we typically do, going, you know, moving along, trying to make stuff act either, you know, more intuitively or, you know, new functionality that just, you know, makes it easier to use. And a few fixes. Um, there was a Python interpreter CP, a bug where, if you believe it couldn't couldn't reach a URL, it would go into a tight spin loop and take 100% of your CPU. So Brent nailed that one down, so we stopped doing that because uh, that's not desirable. Uh, things in the works. Um, here's some stuff that's uh, that's still still being looked at. Um, uh, that's you know been PR'd. Um, uh, one to call out specifically that I think uh, is so folks are excited about is uh, bringing Lorcon back um, for Wi-Fi support. Um, so that's that's been getting some interest. Ah, let's go to the team updates. Dharma Initiative. Anybody? Yeah. So uh, this past month has been an interesting month, as the holidays always are, when we get tons of community contributions. Uh, just with our team alone, we've landed something like 20, 25 PRs or something, uh, almost all of them from the community, uh, which has been great. Y'all are 
pretty awesome with that. Uh, also been working on uh, powering uh, Rabbit7's project Sonar uh, with uh, Metasploit. Um, with the current Metasploit, that's not super easy because current Metasploit is kind of slow and scanning the whole internet with something that's kind of slow um, is expensive. Uh, and so we've been taking the performance aspects of the work we've been doing with uh, external Python modules, which you can read about in my Haxmas post. Um, and uh, using that and making something that could power an internet-wide uh, scanning or be included as a Metasploit scanner and give you all the same juicy info that uh, Sonar would get if they were to scan your range of IPs. So you can use that if you're like the admin of a blacklisted range, uh, but you still want to see the results, uh, or if you're running an internal thing or behind an ad or something. Cool. That was handy. So that'll be handy. Uh, nice. You know, y'all you know, started using Google Drive for storing yeah, bonus so information? Yeah, so before holiday, Brian and I had, had a little discussion about where to put like all these full NAS PCAPs and all the vulnerability, you know, whatever notes you have in a, in a single place. If you're verifying uh, stuff on GitHub, and then you say, for example, you need uh, a vulnerable software from the contributor, you know, instead of asking, hey, give me a secret link or whatever, you can just like go to Google Drive and then create a folder and then share with them and then let them upload their stuff. So everything will be more centralized. And, and then it turns out to be great. Um, also, we've started to be, uh, adding more information on that module documentation. That way, it's, it's an effort to like, encourage uh, people to, um, I guess, do more research and you know, actually try to reverse engineer. Also, since the, the, the notes will also be in Google Drive, so everything you need is in Google Drive. So, nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Wei. Sure. All right, let's see what the script kiddies are up to. <laughs> Ah. Hello. Hello. Excellent. Oh, that formatted so well. Yeah, there's something about presentation mode that in my MacBook and stuff. Ah, okay. Um, so we, uh, the script kiddies kind of took advantage of, of the uh, Christmas lull while no one was paying attention to try and get some house cleaning done to reset ourselves. One of the things is uh, the automated test script, uh, as you can see, used to be the main function used to be significantly way too big. Um, and one of the things that uh, I worked on was refactoring that into encapsulated functions on a shared library. So it's much easier to work with and deal with. And so if anybody else wants to work with it, it's not just a pile of random code generated by yours truly. Um, one of the other things that we worked on was in baseline builder. Uh, the cool thing is, you know, you can use baseline builder to build a bunch of VMs. Now you can actually build uh, multiple sets of VMs. So if you wanted to have maybe two different ranges on the same VM, uh, the same ESXi server, you can actually use a uh, an argument now to pass it a prepend string. So all of the VMs will have that prepend string in front of the names. So you can have multiple different ranges on the same ESXi server. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, Thanks. that's about, that's all we got. That's cool. Thanks, sir. Abnormal form. What are y'all been up to? Uh, so we added our first, um, well, Matthew uh, got a PR up for our first delete API action. So we're filling out all those REST actions. Yeah. Um, it's uh, for the host objects. Now you can actually delete them uh, when they're stored on a remote database, which is nice. But it laid some of the groundwork that was necessary to start adding deletes to other stuff. So it should be smooth sailing from there. Um, I, I have a PR up now, it hasn't been landed yet, for adding HTTPS support to the remote uh, remote data service and the client side. So now they can talk encrypted and not uh, just send everything over plain text HTTP, which is really nice. Um, what else? Uh, it's not on there, but uh, just we, we got the um, uh, our team's first commercial release out just before the end of the year. Uh, it was fairly smooth. There were a little bit of pickups, but um, Got it out the door uh, with a bunch of nice Metasploit framework um, coolness. What else? I think that's about it. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, James. Mm -hmm. Always good to get that commercial release out. Uh, 
Flatlanders. So I'll speak to this. So we got the metal extension loader landed uh, a few weeks back, and uh, I put up a YouTube video doing uh, showing kind of a hello world example uh, for developers, and then also just doing a run through of the existing sniffer module we put in there. Um, just if anybody wants to see how to how to use it in general, uh, I'm working on a Swift keylogger extension at the moment. Uh, hopefully, have that uh, by next meeting uh, all buttoned up and reviewed and in. Uh, Ruby SMB net share enum off or SMB two uh, working on that and we're also on the commercial release this cycle so you know, fingers crossed. It's time for demos. It has the wrong year on it, but that's what came up on the internet. So <laughs> that's, what we got. that's what we got. So in this demo, I'm just going to talk about um, verifying one of the pull requests um, that we had. Um, this is a, a software called Comvault. Comvault is a, a software that basically, it's simply to people driving away. It's meant for uh, storing data, archiving data, that sort of thing. Um, one thing that's interesting about Comvault is it was uh, formed in Bell Labs. If you have heard of Bell Labs, <clears throat> it's the same place that C++ was invented. And C2, right? Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. This thing has a long history. Um, when I was reversing or uh, verifying this software, the, the code actually looked pretty good, pretty, pretty well written, but there's uh, basically a giant backdoor on one of the services. Basically, all you got to do is connect to it. There is a, a message type uh, specifically for, for executing a command, and the function literally is called execute command. So this is very straightforward, and you know I thought that was amusing. Uh, so in this demo, I'm going to show you how I how I figured this out. So first off, we already have this module to begin with, okay? And I already have the software installed right here. Not you, this one right here. Um, so in the uh, module description, it says this is a command injection. Vulnerability. Well, in C, C++ programs, the first thing that you will think of is either the win exec function or the create process function. Which one do you want to choose? Well, usually nowadays it should be the create process one because that's the one that you know, uh, it's meant to replace the win exec uh, function. So um, when you're debugging this kind of stuff, Obviously, that's your first choice, so you want to put a breakpoint break there. In this case, it's right here. I know it's very tiny. I cannot make it bigger because I'm on a tiny screen. Uh, but this first breakpoint here is the create process breakpoint. And if I continue, and if I fire the exploit, we see that we hit the breakpoint for create process A. I know it's very tiny, you can see, but I'll try to, I'll try to explain as much as possible. And if you look at the backtrace, um, and I post it to okay. the backtrace is very important in this case because first off, the create by looking at the backtrace for the create process, you can tell how this thing uh, the basically work for this. So you see the execute command right here. So that's basically a command that you know, that executes your stuff. And and this thing came from the message handler. The message, the message handler basically handles, when you send a packet, it parses the packet and see which uh, message type you're, you're trying to request, and then it'll decide which function you want to use. So let's look at, take a look at that right quick um, in IDA. And since I got fire from my I will assist box to do right here. So in this screen here, I have Ida already open, and all I got to do is search for this thing called CMD message handler, and it looks like it's the first one. Okay, so now you see, obviously this kind of is pretty overwhelming, but if you see uh, this, uh, the lower left corner, there's a graph view right here. You see this, this, this all long line here bunch of notes right here. These are all the message types that it supports. If you can take a look at one of them. So I cannot de decompile from this version, but you see all these cases, these are all 
uh, you know, these are all the message types that supports. And if you look at case nine, uh, this is very tiny. You know. This is actually a, an exact command. Uh, so that means if you send uh, a nine for the for the message type, it'll execute this. And then obviously everything else will be pretty straightforward. And if you look at look at a little bit more, you can tell this is meant for. Here, there's one. So you can tell this execute command is for, uh, it's meant to support specific commands, uh, like back off shadow right here. Um, there's a couple more, like I find the sort of thing. These were like for restoring data and, <coughs> you know, backup. You know, it's meant for these processes. But um, the, um, but if you if your packet doesn't doesn't ask for any of these, it'll still run. It it'll end up just executing whatever it is you want it to execute. So that allows you to uh, get remote code execution and and also as a system. Um, so that's so fantastic. Well, so so to, to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna fire the exploit. Hopefully this works. Do I still have the debugger running? Yeah, I do. Okay. Let me disable this right quick. Oh, it'll work. Uh, let me break and then disable all the breakpoints. And then hopefully that'll work. It's not even reachable right now. But the IP change. Oh. Let me sit there. Yes. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so that's for So because the fact that this is an execute command, you can do whatever, you can execute whatever you want, there's no risk of crashing it. Uh, so this should be extremely reliable. Excellent.